In the previous video, I explained how you define the bounding box and make sure that the bounding box size is set correctly so that all the elements in your project are included in your quantity takeoff. In this video, I will explain how you can split that project bounding box uh, by defining floor levels. So we will define floor elevations. Again, uh, it's important to mention that the location breakdown structure that we define in VCO Office is unrelated to the location breakdown structure that may exist in the authoring BIM application, which means that any updated models that come in uh, are automatically processed with the VCO Office locations. Let's define some floors in our location breakdown structure. In this video, we will be using the location breakdown structure manager again. And this time we will define floor splits by defining the elevations on which you want to add the floors to the location breakdown structure. In the location breakdown structure manager view, uh, started with the uh, define locations workflow item. This is what the project bounding box looks like after deactivating and reactivating uh, the uh, the models after changing the bounding boxes explained in the previous video. The next step is going to be to define locations for this project and I do that by selecting the project node and then uh, from the uh, right click context menu add a floor split. I'll select floor split and that will create two new nodes underneath the project level. I know that uh, this project has a foundation, a first floor, second floor, and a third floor, so I need um, another two uh, floor nodes. So I right click again and add a floor split, and I do that again and add another floor split. Now the elevations are not correct at the moment. The elevation of the foundation is correct. I rename the foundation node by double clicking on it and typing the desired name. Uh, floor 1 uh, should be uh, at an elevation of 0. So I'm changing that to 0 over here. Floor 2, double click to change the name. And that should be at 10, 10 feet. And floor three should be at 20 feet. Now, as you can see, there are exclamation marks over here, uh, which means that a model reactivation is needed uh, to update the quantities and to determine to which location the elements in your model belong. After a model reactivation, and again that is explained in video number four in this uh, level six, uh, this is the result. So I now have project, the exclamation marks are gone, and when I select one of the floor levels, uh, for example foundation, uh, four new bounding boxes are introduced to the project. I can select the include parent option, uh, which provide the context, and uh, that shows highlighted which location bounding box belongs to which location in the location breakdown structure over here. What I can also do is uh, right click on a location node and select isolate to review which of the elements are included in that location. As you can see the columns and the floor slabs are all included uh, in this uh, floor level too. Selecting the next floor level will restore the model and, uh, and let you uh, continue your uh, review of the locations that you defined. In the next level we will use, or in the next video, we will use these floor levels uh, to define zones and for that we will uh, use the cut and view depth properties. In this video, I use the LBS manager to define floors using floor splits and by entering the elevation uh, values for the floors that we wanted to define. After defining the floors, we reactivated the models and then we reviewed the elements inside the floor locations by isolating locations and by activating the uh, parent location box to provide the context uh, of the selected locations.